may have seen that huge crowd at the campaign flag of in Kwaibom earlier today. But how well is the PDP put together? Is the PDP off to a dream start? What's the implication of this moving train, which looks like it's not firing on all its cylinders? And of course, we dive into the manifesto of the presidential candidate of the PDP tonight. To do that with us, we're joined by Senator Emmanuel Okajev, who represents Benue North in the National Assembly. It's good to have you on the program. Uh, joining us live from our Abuja studio. Thanks for having me, Karide. Well, um, you're in Abuja, uh, Senator Okachev, and we saw that showing in a quiet bomb. Being a ranking member of your party, a senator, a prominent member, one would be naturally tempted to ask, why were you not at the flag off? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. I am a member of the ECOWAS parliament, and we held a parliamentary session in, in Lome, Togo. So I just came back. I, I couldn't... Uh, Get set, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, get there on, on time. But I'm there in spirit. I'm observing everything. I'm following everything that is going on. Well, uh, that was that was well said. I, I wonder when did you return from the event? Because I know how politicians are: barely sleep, run your meetings into late night. So for something as important as that, I, I imagine that you'll have surely tried to make some inconveniences to get there. Well, kind of, it, it, Let's, it's not everybody that is a full-blown PDP member that that, were, that is, uh, you know, in, in Uyo. So let's not make an issue of my not being there. I'm telling you I'm 100% PDP and uh, I'm, I'm ready to work for the success of the party at all levels. Just to be clear, I mean, so we put it all out there for people who are wondering as well. But would you say, from what you've seen today, the intrigues within your party, the absent governors, the ones present, uh, would you say your party is up to that dream start uh, for the campaign, the presidential campaign now? Well, the party has zoomed off, and uh, what and all, as you say, there are problems, and uh, I, I think... I, I, I have, I have, um, I have a lot of optimism as to, you know, settling this issue that we have on ground uh, before the election proper takes place. I, I'm not too proud of what is happening, uh, but I don't think that will hold back uh, what the party is going to do, the, the victory that the party is yearning for and working for. And so, you, in your intro, you said. You spoke about the huge crowd that was there. I mean, it's an indication that in spite of all the problems, the PDP is ready to zoom off. And uh, even as some members of the party, the agreed members of the party, uh, you know, opted out of the campaign, you can see that their names are still there, meaning that when this matter is resolved, they will join the, the campaign train and, and be part of it. Uh, but I... I in, in, in all good conscience, uh, I, I'm not too happy that uh, we have these problems on the ground. But I, I don't think uh, uh, ultimately they will hold the party back from getting the victory that it deserves. I mean, it looks like we were using uh, the presence of, you know, large crowd now as a yardstick uh, for a show of support or, you know, level of acceptance of political parties, even though we've seen large crowd clamoring behind even people of questionable character. But... I mean, it looks like that's where we're at in the political scene. But speaking of those issues, and it's good that you're, I mean, you said you're not even happy with it because it's like a moving train that is not firing on all of its cylinders. Imagine if those five governors were present at that campaign flag of today. I mean, it would probably be way bigger uh, than this. And uh, your governor, uh, Samuel Otom, I mean, had said he stands with Governor Wike in his demand. He's also said that Lahaji Atiku Abubakar is his candidate, but he was not at that flag of, as, as well. Uh, is that also an indication of the issues, or at least things that make you sad uh, in, within your party? Well, uh, uh, talking about large crowd, you were the one that started with the large crowd, not me. I, I just answered to what you said. Uh, Oh, my governor, Tom, uh, I should say, is, is, is trapped between the rock and the hard place in this matter. Uh, you know, the governors are very powerful, especially in an opposition party. Uh, they are very powerful when it comes to running the party because they fund the parties. And it's because of the maneuvers of the governors that uh, the present 
national ESCO is in place. And indeed, because of that, that even the national chairman is there today, or the chairmanship was zoned to Benue. So uh, on the one hand, Otom would not want to disappoint his uh, brother governors who you know, maneuvered and, 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 and we arrived at where we are today in terms of putting together this ESCO. Uh, the national chairman comes from Benue. So Otom cannot be seen to come out clearly and work against him. So that's why I said this trap between the rock and the hard place. And so it, it's a matter of maneuvering. I, I sympathize with his position, but it, it, it's something that has to be negotiated. Uh, that's why there shouldn't be any arm twisting about this thing at all. I, I believe the time is still there for, for negotiations to arrive at a solution where everybody will be carried along. You know that saying, you're either with us or against us. And I mean, I like to believe that there's no sitting on the fence in this one. If clearly those governors, including your governor, were not at that event today, they didn't pull their weights as politicians say, then naturally, if you're not with us, then you're against us would apply, some would say. So I wonder, because when we had you the last time, uh, I think it was in September on this program, I mean, you said in your words, uh, that Senator you will step down, but it has to be negotiated in such a way that it doesn't push the party into a further crisis. It's October now, uh, we're nearing November, he has not stepped down. Do, do you think the party is holding on to him as well uh, because of that possible crisis? And I, I wonder, is your party too stuck between a rock and hard place in this one? You know, what I said then was that uh, the national chairman is ready to step down. But he cannot just step down like that because the structures of the party of the parties are such that he cannot just step down and the problem will be resolved. Because if he steps down now, the it, the position will go to the national vice chairman not. Okay, so it is something that has to be negotiated behind closed doors. That that is, and the position still holds. You know, asking the national chairman to step down as if that will is that will, will resolve every issue. Uh, that was the position that I made, and it still holds, okay? Uh, the, the, the impression should not be created that the man doesn't want to go. He wants to stick uh, to that position by all means. But again, it has to be negotiated in such a way that it doesn't leave the, the party in a deeper crisis. That was my position then, and I, I, I still hold the view. Do you have it on good authority, uh, because you said it should not be painted as though he doesn't want to go. Do you have it on good authority that he's actually open to resigning and leaving as the chairman, the national chairman of the party? It's in the public domain that it was reported even by the media that Ayu himself gave certain conditions on which he would step down, okay? Along the, the lines that I'm already talking about, that if he's to step down, what happens to the positions in the South? Are they still going to remain or it will be shifted, you know? Because th those positions were uh, negotiated and uh, all those that were in the south came to the north previously, and, and, and vice versa. And so if it is going to, if he's going to step down now, is he going to step down and the matter, uh, the, the chairmanship goes to the south, and then that is the end of the matter? If, if, what if the secretary, for instance, says, no, I was elected for four years, I'm not leaving. What if another person in the south says, I'm not leaving? It will create another whole set of problems. So that is why I, I said then, and I'm saying today, that this is a matter that has to be negotiated. It is not a matter that should be untwisted. It's not a matter that should be done through force. It's something, it pains me to be talking about this matter over and over again, but that is the position that uh, I think we should talk. Right, but for you, are you actively involved in campaigning for your presidential candidates? It's really, let's say, I, I, I'm here to come across any of those uh, aggrieved governors that will say that no, I'm not, I'm not campaigning for, for uh, or, or the uh, article is not my presidential candidate. They are all saying it. Uh, just today, I was reading that a of, uh, of, of uh, Abia State was saying Atiku is still his uh, this thing. So uh, they have not said. I'm, I'm going to campaign from uh, House of Assembly to the presidential candidate. I mean, there, there are two, I, there are two different myself, issues uh, here. Uh, pardon me, Senator Okachev. There is, yes, the statement that he is my candidate, but there is the pulling out of the campaign process, which uh, Governor Wike and his allies said, we are pulling out of this campaign process, saying that they will not actively campaign uh, for the presidential candidate. And that's why I'm asking you, are you actively campaigning, unlike 
the other, uh, you know, the governors and their allies who say they are pulling out, are you actively campaigning for the presidential candidate? Currently, I'm not a member of the campaign council at that level. At where I'm going to operate, I will, I will campaign fully for all the candidates of the party. Where, so, I, since I'm not a member of the uh, presidential campaign council, I won't do it at the level of moving from state to state, but where I have the, the, the you know, where I'm going to operate, I'm going to campaign for all the candidates of the party. I wonder, has this put you in a difficult position? I mean, just let us know from a personal point of view, uh, because, I mean, your governor has taken a position with his allies, saying he stands with Governor Wike. I mean, you are a senator, you uh, have the party demands trying to support your candidate, and then you have your governor's demands as well. Does it put you in a difficult position, and perhaps other people like you? No, you see, even the governor is, tra is making efforts to ensure that this matter is resolved. So I believe before the elections, the matter will be resolved. So I, 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 I don't think I have any issues at all. I'm embarrassed that uh, we are not moving as one as yet. But I believe that in the fullness of time, that matter will be resolved. So uh, because I can't see myself campaigning for another party uh, in, in my domain where, where, where I'm going to be campaigning, I, I can't see myself doing that. But if you're invited to join that campaign council, would you be open to that? If I'm invited by my party to do, at any level, why not? I will. I will. I assure you. Well, the BOT chairman, uh, Senator Wabara, has had been moving around trying to, you know, resolve the issues. We've not heard from, uh, I mean, the outcome of that meeting he had with Governor Wike. And it looked like uh, Governor Wike uh, dug his heels and said, this is what we want. And he said, well, we're going to consider it. Uh, do you think that for the BOT, uh, they have as part of the options the resignation or at least the removal of a chairman, whichever. Uh, Kyle, they have said this, and I'll say it again, that this matter is, is not beyond redemption. And part of the efforts, efforts are being made, I mean, at different levels. BOT, uh, other elders of the party, some founding uh, fathers of the party, and all of that, I don't know which will succeed, which from which direction the, the solution will come. But I believe that the matter will be resolved. That, right. I, that's why I said I'm, I'm incurably optimistic about the resolution of this crisis. Well, it's 137 days thereabouts of campaigning. Well, 136 days if you remove the day before till the 2023 elections. And I'm glad you already said that you'll uh, be a part of the campaign council if you are invited. So help Nigerians understand what you'll be selling uh, to them. We've listened to a pitch from your presidential candidate and his, uh, his running mate and other leaders. And part of the thing said uh, is that uh, they're going to rescue Nigeria from hunger and poverty. And this is something we hear time and again. Uh, the poverty figures in Nigeria is staggering and, and all of that. So how do you propose to do that? And first, let me just ask you, what would you say is responsible for the hunger and poverty in Nigeria today? Uh, in, in 20, prior to the 2015 elections, when APC was campaigning for, to take over, uh, they said the PDP had misgoverned and that they were going to right the wrongs. Insecurity was on the cards, uh, economy was on the cards, uh, you know, corruption was on the cards. Those were the major plank on, on which they campaigned. Now, eight years down the line, some of the excuses we hear are that, oh, uh, a PDP took 16 years and so it's only eight years. You knew you were not going to go beyond eight years no, of no, this Senator, administration. Okay, Jeff, so the, the question that, that is if, if your party has been able to identify why there is poverty in the land, there is hunger in the land. Have you been able to identify it such that you can solve it? We're winding down in 30 seconds, by the way. Of course, the management of the resources of this country are not well done, okay? The, uh, the, the, the president, this administration said that uh, oil subsidy is a scam. Eight years, nearly eight years down the line, it is still a scam, as, as they said. They, they spoke about, uh, you know, they spoke about uh, uh, refineries, one refinery per, per year, the first four years. Nothing has happened. And right. the PDP has learned its lesson from some of the setbacks that we, that, that we encountered uh, in, the, in the 16 years. And, but even then, if you compare, I mean, there's no basis for comparison. Going by the pieces right. that we now have. There's no basis. Well, Senator Emmanuel Okajev representing Benue North in the National Assembly. It
I'd like to thank you so much for your time. Wish we had some more, but I think it's instructive at this point. Thank you so much, and we wish your party the very best. It's a pleasure being here.